Let's take a look at the threading block. Here we see a screenshot of a threading cycle screen. The, <clears throat> the, the very top section there is very similar. You're going to enter in the tool number. It's going to bring in the information of the, from the offset screen, such as the orientation, uh, tip radius, and so forth. We're going to enter a, an RPM. This RPM is going to be used throughout the, uh, the cutting of the thread. We have a checkbox there for use safe rapid point. If we uncheck that box, we are not going to be able to select the X and Z rapid positions, which means prior to this threading block, we would want to use a position block in the program to be able to position the turret into location to cut these threads. If we check that box, we can now put that, that uh, X, Z location data in the block itself, eliminating the need for the <clears throat> um, position block in the program. The next field we have there is called strategy. You can see that there it is highlighted. There's a decreasing depth showing in the field. If you look at the soft keys along the right side of the screen, the F2 key is the constant volume removal. Those are your two options, decreasing depth and constant volume removal. Decreasing depth is probably the more common. It's what we want to use the most. That gives you the ability to describe or determine a rough start depth that's going to be the first cut of um, the first cut maximum depth of that first cut you want to give it a rough final depth in this case we're showing a half a thou that's how much is going to be left for the final pass and it's going to then use from your <clears throat> information you see on the geometry tab when we click on it your starting diameter or your major diameter on an OD thread for example and your minor diameter, which is going to be the thread depth or the thread diameter at the bottom of the crest, it will then use those numbers, dividing them, getting smaller and smaller and smaller each time, thereby reducing the pressure on the insert as it engages more of the angle. You see that we have finish passes there. How many finish passes do we want? We have three, and we want those to be all a half a thousandths each. That will also be taken into consideration when the number of passes is calculated in the uh, decreasing depth strategy. Put spring passes there if you want. No extra material would be removed. That is just going to follow the final finish pass at depth as many times as you tell it to remove any spring that might have occurred in the part. And then you see the number of passes in this case 82 would be probably more than we would want, but based on the numbers that were thrown in this um, this block when the screenshot was taken, it does show you how many passes this tool will take. <clears throat> Here's the screenshot of the geometry screen. We're going to select the strategy or the type of thread. It's an OD thread, OD taper, ID straight, ID taper, or a face. You can see those selections there on the soft keys because this field is highlighted. Give it a Z start and a Z end. We want to make sure we start far enough in front of the part that by the time that it gets into the cut we have accelerated to the excuse me the speed that we're going to need. Give it the, the, the final Z depth, um, the X clearance, that's how far it's going to pull off above the major diameter for an OD thread for example between passes. So it's going to lift up past that one and a half inch di major diameter by 25 thousandths, retract back to the 200 thousandths in front of the part or our Z start, plunge down to the next step and continue on. It's going to continue this until it reaches a minor diameter that we have programmed here of one inch 301 thousandths. The pitch um, in this case was calculated 0.125 because we entered the leads lead or threads per inch of eight that calculated the pitch we could have entered the pitch it would have calculated the lead and we have some information along the right side there for vertical lead in yes or no vertical lead out yes or no and that basically means are we going to move only in the x-axis when we plunge to lead in for example at a shoulder we're just going to come straight down an x there will be no in feed angle if you answer no if you answer yes as we have on the um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you answer no, there will it won't be vertical. You will be able to put in an in feed angle, 
or a lead out angle? If you answer yes, it grays that section out, meaning it's going to pull off 90 degrees from the z-axis. Specifying a start angle means if I have uh, a specific di uh, degree of, of if I have a specific degree called out on the print where I need to start this thread in relationship to some other feature that may be on the part, then I can put that specify start angle at yes, and it gives me the ability then to put a, almost a c-axis uh, angle in that field where, where it would start. And then the number of starts, is this a single lead thread, a double lead thread, quad lead thread, and so forth. Last, we see the thread tool setup. <clears throat> Again, if we go to the tool setup screen. We're going to select threading for the type. Enter the max depth of cut. Uh, which tool offset is being used here? Tip radius, of course, is going to be able to be set on the geometry offset screen, as well as the orientation. Notice that in this case, it's an OD threading tool. The orientation points straight down. If this was an ID threading tool, the orientation would point straight up. Put in the uh, speed or RPM that will be automatically set when we pull this tool in the, into the spindle or into the turret location and then coolant, whether you want coolant on or not, and if so, which, which selection. Now here in the graphics <clears throat> screen, that's really only used for graphics. And this is uh, very evident when creating a thread. You want to be as accurate as you can on describing this because if I were to just to put a half an inch in there, for example, in, in this example we're seeing here, that would make a very large V-shaped tool that's going to come in on my graphics. And on graphics, it very well may show it running into a corner of a shoulder, um, something that would not happen on the machine because the tool is going to be, in reality, much smaller. So try to be accurate here when you describe your tool to make sure your graphics are going to show you just exactly what it is that you're going to get when you hit cycle start.